Man did not weave the web of life. He is merely a strand in it. Whatever he does to the web, he does to himself. Now we know that not only the web of life, but the, the web of the internet. <laughs> you know, what you do to the internet comes back to harm you. But we are all free willing individuals within this inextricably interconnected and intertwined whole. One indivisible unity. And true liberty, true freedom springs from this unity, this wholeness, this oneness. True freedom is fully realized only to the degree that we make choices that do not hurt anyone else. That's true liberty, that's true freedom. It requires a deep understanding through our connection with the divine, the divine source of wisdom and truth. We must ground ourselves in that wisdom of truth, in the divine that is within us and all around us. And this truth shall set us free. This truth. Ernest Holmes again said, we all wish to be free, but at the same time, we should realize that liberty is not license. To say that we are free with the freedom of God does not mean that we are free to do that which contradicts the divine nature. We are free only in that freedom which God is, the freedom to be alive, to enjoy living, to enter into the activities of everyday living with enthusiasm and interest. We are free to love and be loved. We are free to give full and complete expression to every capacity we possess, provided this freedom harms no one and hurts no thing. You know, I was born in Germany to a German family, and I was adopted by an American family. And, and I came here when I was about six. And in that same year, uh, my parents took me to, I, I, I remember this as, as if it were yesterday. My parents took me to downtown Seattle, and we went into this big tall building, and we went in this room, and there was an old man in there with a long black robe, and he asked me some questions. He asked me if I liked it here. He asked me if I wanted to stay. And he asked me some other questions which I don't really remember, but I must have answered them well. Because he said to me, welcome to America. You are now an American citizen. And then he gave me this little flag. <laughs> And then we went out to a really fancy restaurant that overlooked the water. And I had my little flag because I was now an American citizen. You know, individuals and nations go through a journey to arrive at freedom. And that journey goes from dependence to independence to interdependence to shalom, peace. In my late 20s, I went back to Germany, back to spend a month with my birth mother and her sister, and my sister and her husband and little boy. And in the four weeks that I was there, I went through the entire growing up process all over again. I went through this journey of arriving at a place of shalom, of peace, of freedom, starting with dependence, independence, interdependence. And so week one, Week one, I was in the state of dependence. It was almost like I was the little baby come home for the first time, and everybody took care of me. Everybody did everything for me that first week. And I was dependent on these people that I had just met for all of my needs. Much as this nation, when it was first founded, was dependent on Mother England. And ultimately, some of them, as the story goes, got dependent on some of the Indians to keep them from starving to death. Dependence, dependence. Week two in Germany, I began to experience this sense of one thing. You know, after the first time in my life ever looking like people and having uh, traits that were like other people, well, the thrill wore off after the first week. And by the second week, I'm already wanting to be different, right? So I'm wanting to differentiate myself and to be more independent, more self-sufficient, free from the influence and the control of the other people in the house. 
much like our nation at some point decided they wanted to be independent from England. They wanted to be self-governing and autonomous. And so we declared our independence. Week three for me in Germany, I moved into a state of interdependence. It's where I began to realize that I could be individual and whole in the midst of other people who were also individual and whole, and that we could do for each other. We could depend on each other that we could work together and maintain our wholeness as individuals and as a group. Much as our nation began to realize for this nation to work independently, it needed to become interdependent so that we work together in our wholeness as a nation and as individuals, individual states and cities and towns. And ultimately, we've learned that we need to be interdependent with other nations. It goes beyond these shores to the whole world, the next great experiment. And then comes week four in Germany when I realized that what I was really striving for and what I could attain if I so chose was shalom. Now most of us know that shalom means peace. The greater meaning of the word shalom, the greater meaning of the word peace is freedom from fragmentation. It's another way of saying wholeness. When we are free from fragmentation, we are whole, we are peaceful, and we are free. And that is what it is to be an evolved human being, an evolved group of human beings, and an evolved world. And when we embrace and embody that, we move into a place of spiritual freedom. Spiritual freedom. Freedom from the inside out, the outside in, and all around, every which way but loose. <laughs> Charles Fillmore, who was the co-founder of the Unity teaching, said freedom is a quality or state of being without restraint, bondage, limitation, or repression. Having a sense of complete well-being. It is a result of regulating one's life according to principle, not according to what anyone else may think or say. We can never know the full meaning of freedom until we abide in spirit consciousness. Without prayer and meditation, there can be no concept of spiritual freedom and therefore no demonstration of it. It is gained in communion with God in the silence. And aren't you all lucky that we're starting a pre-service meditation now here so that you can be grounded in spirit consciousness and be free amongst other people who are being complete, perfect, whole, and free. That is shalom. That is peace. And in our own Science of Mind Declaration of Principles, it says, we believe the ultimate goal of life to be a complete emancipation of all discord of every nature, and that this goal is sure to be attained by all. That, my friends, is shalom. That is freedom from fragmentation. That is wholeness, and that is peace. You know, even the Lord's Prayer, even the Lord's Prayer teaches us about spiritual freedom. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Forgiveness sets ourselves and others free. From the Aramaic translation of the Lord's Prayer, loose the cords of mistakes binding us as we release others from the entanglement of past mistakes and release the strands we hold of others' guilt. Spiritual freedom. Let each other go. Let yourself go. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. From the Aramaic... Don't let surface things delude us, but free us from what holds us back. Do not let surface things be seduce us. Do not be seduced by that which would divert us from our true purpose and illuminate the opportunities of the present moment. That is what it is to be complete, perfect, whole, and free. Free to be who we truly are. The freedom of full self-expression. Imagine living in a world where we all have the freedom to be fully self-expressed. I don't know about you, but that's a world I'd love to live in. And we do to some extent, but there's more. There's more to it. Or his once thought that the limitations we find encircling us have but one source. They spring from our own thought. We are in bondage only to a false sense of the self because we judge the possibility of the future by the limitations of the past. We all believe that with God all things are possible, but we must realize that God is an indwelling presence. Therefore, with God in me, all things are possible. 
God in you, all things are possible. God in us, all things are possible. Let go of the limitations. Break free. We're called to break free from the limitations and the fears of the past. To break free of the intermediaries that we've allowed to get between us and the spirit. Ralph Waldo Emerson said, get rid of your second-hand gods. You must have your own direct relationship with spirit. That's freedom. We're called to reconnect with spirit and the power and the pure energy of the source of all life, spirit itself, and to radiate that spirit energy as a power for good, free of all limitations, not just for ourselves, but for all of humanity. You know, don't be selfish. Give yourself away freely, all of you. Let yourself loose. I would love to see all of these spiritual beings on the loose. <laughs> you know, the, the truest freedom comes not from someone else's permission and not even from the rights and privileges granted to us by governments. Victor Frankl, who was a concentration camp survivor, said, man can preserve a vestige of spiritual freedom, of independence of mind, even in terrible conditions of psychic and physical stress. Everything can be taken from a man but one thing, the last of the human freedoms, to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances, to choose one's own way. This is the ultimate freedom. It is the spiritual freedom, which cannot be taken away, that makes life meaningful and purposeful. Free to choose. Free to choose. Barley spoke about that in her prayer. Free to choose. Exercise your right to be free to choose. Ultimate freedom comes from spirit within us and all around us, through us and as us. This is the true spirit of freedom. This is the true spirit of the holiday, in my opinion. The true spirit of freedom. Freedom to be who we truly are in the creative moment right now. The creative present moment is powerful if we exercise the freedom to choose. Freedom to be who I am. I am that I am. Christian Larson is a new thought mystic and he said, to enter the kingdom is to enter the life of freedom. There is no bondage in spirit and as we grow in the spirit we grow out of all bondage. One adverse condition after another disappears until ultimate freedom is gained. God is absolute freedom, and man is eternally becoming what God is. This means that the life of every moment will be absolutely free, that the measure of freedom will increase in perfect harmony with the increase of the mind's capacity for freedom. So as we practice spiritual living, we become as spirit is. We become the ultimate freedom itself. Eric Fromm, who was a psychiatrist, wrote a book called Escape from Freedom. And in that book, the, 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 I'm going to say you have to read the whole book, the, the nugget in the book was that, that there is a lot of responsibility that comes with freedom, and many people feel overwhelmed by that responsibility, and they try to escape freedom in order to escape the responsibility of it. Would you sacrifice a whole lot when you do that. So this is what I say. This is from me. In a world landscape littered with disregard rather than respect, divisive opinions powering over community, and destructive choices outweighing personal integrity, it is too easy to stand back and do nothing. It is too easy to go numb and settle for survival instead of thrival. It is too easy to recite words and not take the time to comprehend or savor their meaning. It requires more for us to be courageous than to be popular, gracious rather than self-absorbed. A true hero is one who lives mindfully. As the United States of America celebrates its Independence Day, I, 
Reverend Dr. Susie Shadle make my allegiance to a grander, more expanded way of being. For I know that we live in a world of interdependence, and I commit to helping create a world that works for everyone. Will you join me in pledging allegiance to the true spirit of freedom? Blessings on your journey. And now, I have something for you to enjoy. A video put together by Reverend Dr. David Alt, who is the senior minister at our center in Atlanta. I pledge allegiance to breaking the self-imposed barriers of my humanness. I recognize that my time on this planet is precious and limited. Every day is a canvas on which I can create. Every day is an opportunity for me to move in the direction of the dreams and the expanded vision I feel inside. By setting aside petty grievances, past mistakes, righteous anger and my broken story, I pledge to move forward and embrace the experience of freedom right here and right now. I pledge allegiance to the expression of my spiritual honesty. I fully own the fact that my presence here in this body and on this earth is a celebration of uniqueness and importance. Creation makes no mistakes. I am a creation of life, of a higher power, of perfection. My reason for being here matters in the grand divine plan. I must be honest with my contract of life and walk the path of my destiny with conviction, purpose, and grace. I pledge allegiance to the quiet soldier within. I understand that the championing spirit that is already cellularly alive inside of me, that was already in place at the time of my birth, waits patiently for my current belief about myself to join it in its knowing. I march forward towards a history of my own making, wisely, lovingly choosing the means by which I spread my beliefs and convictions. I never make others wrong for their chosen path, for I recognize the innumerable roads that lead to the one. I pledge allegiance to a partnership with divinity. I choose to see others and myself from eyes that already view the wholeness and perfection within. I do not entertain our past damage or encourage us to identify with it, for I trust that a grander calling card has been printed for us to distribute in promoting our lives. I champion all of us to celebrate what is working rather than what isn't. I pledge allegiance to wise discernment, knowing when to speak and when to remain quiet, knowing when to comfort and when to leave alone, knowing when to intervene and when to avoid rescuing and interfering. I pledge allegiance to people and projects of substance. I cannot travel this road alone. If there is anything we need as a species, it is each other. I actively choose to support those whose work I believe in with my time, talent, and treasure. I joyously give to those whose intention and purpose is for self-empowerment and the awakening of humanity to its personal magnificence. I rally to make others aware of such light bearers and do what I can to support them in furthering their vision. I pledge allegiance to the freedom from comparison. I once and for all lay down my wearisome, stale beliefs of unworthiness and not being good enough. I know that my past does not define who I am. I am forever evolving growing and learning. I recognize that I am a marvel. I now choose opportunities to let my voice be heard, to let my light shatter the darkness of futility 
so that every personal dream is explored. I pledge allegiance in knowing that things are not always as they seem. Just because something can't be seen with the physical eye or rationalized by our current mode of understanding does not negate its existence. Understanding the difference between reality and illusion, I move into a fuller acceptance of the non-physical, the mystical, intuitive, soul aspect of living that expands my consciousness and deepens my days. I pledge allegiance to actions that fulfill the greatest good for all. By becoming a gatekeeper of compassion, tolerance, and love, I move into a fuller conviction of pure intent with regard to the words that I speak and the choices that I make. I pursue a win-win in all activities of life. I pledge allegiance to those who have gone before me, the ancestral lineage whose courage, sacrifice, and conviction still live in my bones. I honor the privileges given to me today because of the sweat from their pioneering efforts and the fortitude of their convictions. I give thanks for my responsibility in creating the same for future generations. I pledge allegiance to a love that has no agenda. I no longer choose to give for what I might get, to manipulate in order to control, to abandon before I can be abandoned, to tolerate because there are seemingly no other options. I choose to love as a way of being. I am content in my choice whether outside circumstances respond or not. In being love, I create fulfillment above and beyond what the human condition can provide. I pledge allegiance to the sacredness of laughter, knowing that the greatest healing force that exists reverberates from the vibration of this holy and irreplaceable gift. I allow humor, joy, and eruptions of laughter to make their home in my heart. I let my physical body respond to the sacred stimulus and biological wonder that laughter creates and vow to keep this attribute alive and thriving all the days of my life.